Hi, in this video, the first of the listing subseries, we're going to look at the basic listing, which, as you remember from last time, we talked about which is using the out of the box content resolvers. We're going to look at how to utilize the data source item children resolver, the context item children resolver, as well as configure custom content resolvers. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is actually create our event listing page and our event listing component. So as we usually do, what I'm going to do here is just create event listing route type. And as you remember from last time, I usually just copy and paste one of my old ones. So this one looks good. I'll just change it here from article listing to event listing. Interesting. And I'll add the event listing component from within as well, directly from here. OK. The second thing we're going to do is just a scaffold. And we're going to scaffold our event listing component. Once it's scaffolded, I'm going to delete this event listing component because I've already added it as part of the route type. And we're going to see here our event listing component. Now, one really important thing to remember here is that now what we're going to have is actually our props is going to have the children directly either through the data source item children resolver or the context item children resolver or by using a custom content resolver. So the context here will probably change or will be changed or the props, this props will be changed. So. Let me actually show you how it's going to look like. So as you can see here, my props will have something called uh, called fields.items. And this is what's going to have everything. So I'll just copy and paste this so that I don't have to type it again. And then I'll explain it. So I'll just call it event listing component. So as you can see here, what I've done is from the props.fields, I used something called dot items because when you're referencing children through any of these resolvers, it's automatically going to have a list of items, which are the items. And then I use the map to actually loop around them and get every field from them. Now, these are not the fields I want to show for the event. So I'm go, going to go in to templates project training series and I'm going to look at my event just to remember what fields it had so I have a headline an author content start date and ending so I'm going to actually show some of these so let's start off with headline then content and maybe at the end is author and now that I've configured all this, all I need to do is actually deploy my app. And this will generate for me my listing page and my listing component for events. Next, we're going to actually configure how the component reads, because by default, it's going to assume that it's reading the data source. We want to change that and we want to make it start reading from the children. So I'll go into Sitecore. I'll go into renderings. So it's layout, renderings, project, my project's name. And then I look for my event listing component. Okay. I'll unprotect the item because I actually want to change it. And I'll go to layout service. And change the rendering contents resolver. As I said, what I will need to do first is I'll try out the data source item children resolver as my first scenario. What this will do is once I select the data source, it's going to get all the children and show them.
just want to make sure that now this is done the second thing I want to do here is what we did last time which is actually make the event listing host by default our rendering and you remember how we did this last time so first thing I'm going to do is actually go into home and just add an event listing so I need to go to home and actually configure it to have an insert option of event listing so let's go to templates project training series and then event listing and now I can add an event listing here I'll just keep it named as event listing because I'm going to delete it in a bit and then I'll go to publish experience editor you can see here that it doesn't have the actual event listing component because again as we discussed last time it's by default not there so I'm just going to edit this to add it in my placeholder settings And then I'll go here and add my event listing component seems to be an exception and I know why that is because currently the content resolver is not actually getting the right data source so it's always going to throw up an exception so what I'm going to do first is actually change my content resolver to be context item children is over so that it just returns empty and I'm gonna go directly and add it to my event listing so I'll go to the event listing go to standard values presentation details and from here I'm going to go to add my event listing component in the JSS main. Okay, and save. And then go back here. I'll just delete my event listing and create a new one. Okay, now you can see it says event listing component, but it doesn't show any values. This is because this event listing doesn't have any ch child events. So what I need to do is actually configure this. So I'll go here and in enable it to have an insert of event. I'll actually remove page because I don't want anyone to do any mistakes. I'll save. Event. So I'll call it event one, child event one, child event one, author child event one, and content is what do you know, child event one. I'll just create another one. So insert event, and I'll call it child event two. And save. Now if I refresh this page, as you can see, it's showing the child event one and child event two. And this is all I need to do. So remember, let's just go back to what we did exactly. The first thing we did was went to the rendering component, the layout, layout service. I think I'm in the wrong layout service. 
and we chose context item children is over so now it's getting the children these two the next thing we're going to look at is the second type which is data source item children is over so what i'm going to do is actually create any fee any item so i'll call it i'll actually use another event list maybe actually no let's not use an event list just to show you that it has nothing to do with the event list page itself so i'll just use an app route and i'll add within that app route some events so i need to enable events to be added within this so let's go to event you can consider this as just a folder it's not really doing anything it's not even going to be referenced so i'm going to say data source event one headline author and content that just just to show you that it's actually reading these fields i'll add a suffix at the end just saying which field And then let's do a data source event two. Same thing. Okay, and save. Now the next thing I'm going to do is actually change my event listing rendering sorry my event listing component rendering to read data source children so data source item children is over and save now when I refresh the page it's gonna throw an exception why because you cannot read property items of undefined because the data source itself is undefined this is because I have not done null checking here. and this is why at the first scenario it was actually throwing exception I should do a null check before I go to props that fields that items because items itself is under the data source and because the data source is non-existent right now it's throwing this exception here the most obvious way is actually to do a null check here just before you do that so it's checking that the prop fields is not none and just because we're not really going into react configuration what i'm going to do is do a little cheat here which is go to the event listing presentation details go to the component and actually add the data source from here so that it doesn't throw any exceptions and save refresh again and here you have it you have the source event one headline content and author now if I switch back to the children it's going to show me the other data so you can see here that you can actually switch it by just defining how your event listing component is going to read the data so Let's go back to context item children. Save. You can see now it's data source. If I refresh now, it's going to change to child events because we're switching the whether it's the context children or the data source children. Now, these are two very nice resolvers, but sometimes you actually need to create your own because sometimes you might want, for example, showing the featured news. You only want to show the top five, for instance or you might want to do a completely different query. Let's see how this is done. So the first thing I need to go to is actually system, settings, modules, sorry, system modules without settings. And then you can see your rendering content resolvers. You can actually create your own so as you can see here I have an article content resolver which has a query which says all the children but 
only get two. So position is smaller than two. So this is getting the top two only, ultimately. Now, let's see how to do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually go here and create a rendering content resolver. I'll call it event content resolver. And the type should be the same as the normal data source item content resolver or context item children resolver because you can see both of them have the same type because this is the default type that Psycore uses, which is my rendering content resolver in Psycore.lab service. Now, here if you check this box use context item it's going to use the context item otherwise it's going to use the data source item so if we again look at these two the data source item children is over and context item children is over the only difference is this checkbox and they both read children of the item so the item is either the context or the data source item and it's going to read the children of it in my scenario i do actually want to use the context item And my query is going to be the same query we use for the article, which is all my children that are less than two. So any child that is less than two. Now, I'm not going to use this content resolver just yet, just to show you that it actually works. I'm going to have to duplicate this a bit more. So I'm going to create a child event three, four. You can imagine if these come to a very large number, it might not be very efficient to show them all. So if I refresh now, you can see I have one, two, three, four, five different items. All I need to do now just to filter them is ultimately use my custom component. So I'll go to my rendering again, event listing component. I'll go to the layout service. and I'll use my event contents resolver. Now, if all goes well, this should show the first two only because I've filtered where the position is less than two. Oh, it shows one because it's less than, not less than or equal. So there you have it. This is the three ways or three types that you can do using the out of the box content resolver. Now, this works really well for things like a sidebar menu where you're actually, you actually know that the number will never be too many. And you might want to read either the children. So if you have an, a page and you want to have the sidebar show all the ch child pages, you can use, of course, the context item children is over. Or if you have an item that links to different data or different pages in another place, you can use the source item children is over. And I do recommend to always use a custom one just to be able to filter down to the maximum number unless you're absolutely sure this won't go too large. In the next video we're going to look at something called custom which is actually creating a completely custom type. So we're here we're going to create a completely different search rendering content resolver that utilizes the search driven capabilities that SXA provides for the page list component. Thanks for watching.